I, as chair, I would report out that the board has completed its business up to this point and has come up with the recommendation to that it will make to the uh, the board at large at our next meeting, which will be shortly, and um, um, and uh, uh, in terms of the evaluation and uh, and uh, action follow. Um, and with that, uh, I would, then unless any of the committee members have anything they want at this point, I would entertain, the chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. The HR committee meeting is adjourned. <coughs>
the Finance Committee meeting to order. First item, correction to the announcement, Olelo is broadcasting on channel 49, not 55. Although if you're listening to 55, I don't know how you're going to know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, first item on the agenda, public testimony on any of the agenda items? Yeah. Yes. For the finance. For, for the finance, finance committee. Just for finance. Just for finance. Finance. Yeah. Just for finance. All I like know is about the financial audit. That's next. that's not on the agenda for this meeting. That is not on the agenda for this meeting. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, if not, then we'll move into item three, which is approval of the May 31st, 2018 minutes. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item four, our fiscal year 2020 operating capital budget. Good morning, Chair for GE. Members of the Finance Committee, um, So what I want to do today is to just go over the fiscal year 2020 operating and capital budget and I'll go through the operating budget first and well I'll give a summary of the fiscal year 20 operating budget and capital budget and um, then I'll take questions you know after my presentation. So the fiscal year 2020 operating budget um, totals $24,739,000. Um, it's an increase of $1.264 million or 5.38% from fiscal year 2019, the current fiscal year. So the majority of the increase um, in the 2020 budget is in, in the area of salaries and benefits. And that account for about $700,000 of the increase and it's mainly in the area of collective bargaining increases and, um, and pension and post-employment um, benefits. Um, the other category of major increase um, is in the area of um, other expenditures and there's really three categories that drove the increase of $473,000 in other expenditures. Um, one of the category is um, we added about $200,000 and estimated $200,000 for, um, for additional board committee meetings that we had to broadcast. And we <coughs> added approximately $188,000 for um, computer equipment and software licenses purchases for in fiscal year 2020. So that account for the majority of this 473,000 increase. The other categories um, in other expenditures were either holding um, the expenditures at the 2019 level or they, they were very minimal increases in our capital budget. Now, one of the assumptions that we made in the capital budget has to do with um, the board's approval of the public-private partnership delivery method. So um, our assumption take into consideration that um, many of the costs associated with City Center Guideway and stations and also Pearl City Highlands, um, the garage and transit center, um, will be part of the package. In addition to that, um, uh, consulting services, or uh, project management services, I should say, and, um, and our core system contract that will be moved to the P, um, public private partnership. So we took that into consideration. The other areas that we took into consideration is that um, many of our major non-P3 contracts will, um, will be substantially completed 
you know, in fiscal year 2021, so the majority of the expenditures will probably occur in fiscal year 2020. Um, one is our airport guideway and station group. That is slated to be substantially completed by May 2021. And the other big contract is the city center utility relocation, and that is slated to be substantially completed in February of 2022. So um, we expect um, especially for the airport guideway, we expect um, higher expenditures in the fiscal year 20 time frame um, as that contract is being wrapped up. So that being said, our total capital budget for 2020 um, is at $2.394 billion. So if you turn to page five of your budget package, you'll see a detailed breakdown of the fiscal year 2020 operating budget um, by personnel costs and the different categories of current expenses that we have. Um, just going left to right, um, we present what our actual expenditures were in fiscal year 2017 and 18, what the approved to fiscal year 2000 budget um, is, which is $23.4 million. Now on the bottom of fiscal year 2019, you'll see that um, the operating budget is broken out between non-capitalized and capitalized um, expenditures. Um, that was the new policy that we adopted in June of 2018, so um, we applied it to 2019, and those are the numbers that, um, that the City Council also passed as part of the budget ordinance. And we did the same in 2020. Um, we broke out the expenditures um, uh, between non-capitalized and capitalized operating expenditures. So if you look in the bottom, fiscal year 2020, um, we're projecting about $7.2 million as non-capitalized operating and administrative costs and $17.5 million in capitalized operating and, um, and administrative costs. So if you look farther to the, um, to the right, um, you'll see that um, as part of the required budget submission, we um, projected the fiscal year 2021 budget and also the fiscal year 2022 budget. And those numbers are consistent with um, what we projected in our um, financial plan as part of the recovery plan. So one thing I do want to point out, as you s could see, um, as we move um, toward 2025, you know, our estimation is that we need to relook at our staffing level. So. You can see our staffing, staffing level, at, at least from today's standpoint, um, that you see a decrease in staffing level in 2021 and 2022. So pages six to nine, um, we provide explanations to to all the budget categories um, to ex explain not, not only the substantial changes, but also to explain um, in each different types of expenditure categories, um, what are the items that makes up of that category. So that's on pages um, six to nine. On page 10 is our fiscal year 2000 20 to 25 capital budget. So, you know, as discussed earlier, fiscal year 2020 is going to be a big year for us. So if you look through the capital budget, you'll see that all the contract packages that we allocate um, the budget to. And depending on um, our evaluation of, of P3 expenditures, um, you know, this, this table may, may have to be revised depending on the analysis. And we expect to start the analysis 
maybe sometime at the, by the end of the month or the beginning of next month when our P3 advisor, financial advisor, comes on board. And, um, and we hope to have, to break out the P3 um, financial plan maybe by February or March of next year, if not earlier. And the last page, page 13, um, just illustrate the estimated debt service um, for fiscal year 2020. Um, as you know, we currently have $350 million of variable rate debt outstanding. Um, we're going to go out this year, I mean early next year, to issue approximately $250 million in general obligation bonds. And what we estimate in fiscal year 2020 in the September 2019 timeframe is to issue approximately $670 million of general obligation bonds to cover the gap between revenue and expenditures. Now that number may change depending on, um, on the P3 analysis. Okay, so we expect the debt service in 2020 to be in the neighborhood of $56 million. Yeah, so that really concludes my short presentation, and I'll take questions. Rob, Rob this is yeah, sure. slightly off topic, but it relates to the cash flow. Um, how are you doing with your discussions with DAGs and getting the monies released to us from the state transit fund? You know, there. Um, First, we have a good relate working relationship with DAGs. Um, they have two people on staff in our office, and I think, you know, we, um, we have a very good working relationship with the DAG staff. Now, that being said, there were, um, there were three or four items that, um, that, they, uh, that they rejected. Um, um, their justification is that it may not it's either it doesn't meet the capitalization definition of Act 1 or they require additional information in order to make that decision. Um, those items that require additional information, um, we want to have a conversation with them to, to just want to know exactly what additional information is required. Um, you know, some of the um, reason is, is pretty vague, um, such as the latest um, rejection of an invoice. Um, the reasoning was that it was a lack of internal control. You know, so I, I, I know what that means, but I don't know what, um, what additional information we need to provide to show them that, you know, um, within that contract package that they uh, reject, you know, there may be sufficient internal control for that package. So yeah, um, there were an inst there were maybe five rejections. And, and what is the aggregate amount of that? Well, the aggregate, um, I would say, is in the neighborhood of six to seven hundred thousand dollars. But the aggregate is um, is just the invoices, right? What I'm looking at is assuming they reject an invoice in a contract package. My assumption is that everything in that contract package is going to be rejected. So, you know, it, it, my concern is not really the invoice that's rejected, it's the contract back package that's associated with that invoice. And that could be pretty substantial. So, so, I mean, do you have a sense of what that would be based on what they've rejected? Well, so the um, fair collection is the one that we talked about. Um, you know, while the rejection may be in the neighborhood of three, four hundred thousand dollars, but that entire package is about fifteen million dollars. And, uh, and in our budget, you know, in terms of what the city is expected to pick up, I assume that that fifteen million is not in that budget. The fifteen million is not in that budget, but you know, that's one of the contract packages that we hope to be able to sit down with them to explain 
to DAGS that um, the fare collection system is really a bus and rail system. It's a public transportation fare collection system. And rail um, it does have a reasonable amount of cost that will be incurred, such as ticket vending machines, um, testing of back office equipment. Um, so we, we do have our share of expenditures. And those are the things that we would like to sit down with them. We haven't had the opportunity to, but we want to. And, uh, and the, the other amount, you know, you said about 700,000 was rejected. So that's maybe 400,000, uh, 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 representing about 15 million in contract value. Yeah. What, what's, the other, what's the other balance? Well, the other balance is it's harder to, um, to um, estimate the total value. Um, it has to do with our um, eminent domain filings with, um, with the court. The yeah, that's the other. Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah. So that, that's very hard to estimate, right? Um, from what I understand is that um, it's rejected at this point in time until the property acquisition is completed. Then it would, um, then it would become an eligible cost. So that really becomes a timing issue. You know, when will we get reimbursed? You know, at the time we actually file with the court, which we have to, and or when we actually procure the property or have access to the property. So, and the other um, major contract that was rejected has to do with uh, our Kamehameha Highway repaving, which, um, and it's a contract that we issue out, I think, two, three months ago. And that contract has, um, uh, a portion of that contract is um, a Hawaii, H dot related, and we have an MOU with H dot to recapture the money that we spent on the H dot portion of the contract. So it's a, it's a basic for heart. It's basically a net zero uh, uh, cost, right? Because we'll get reimbursed by H dot anyway. From H dot, yes. Um, not only the federal share, but also the local share. H dot is also responsible for the local. Yeah, the H dot portion is eight, uh, it, it, the H dot portion is net zero. The other portion has to do with the project, so and that is covered by GET and TAT. And how much is that? Um, the entire contract, if I remember correctly, is in, uh, is about twenty mid twenties to high twenties, and the H dot portion is about three million dollars. So we're talking about a seventeen million delta. 17 million delta. Yeah, maybe but if 20 million. But, but that's what DAGS is rejecting, right? That's the portion DAGS is rejecting? Yes, the invoice that we submitted to them, yeah. But that's something that we want to talk to DAGS to explain to them, hey, you know, you, we rip up the road, you know, um, doing construction work. I think it's part of the project responsibility to get the road back in the same shape as we inherited. So right now, I mean, so we're talking about $32 million, theoretically, right? 17 plus 15, is that right? No, the, the, the contract, I don't recall the exact value of that contract, I think is in the mid to high 20 millions. Um, about 3 million of that is related to H dot, and that, that portion is fine. Uh, right, so, so let's say the delta is... So maybe delta 25 20 million. million. Yeah, 20, 25 million. And yeah. plus the 15 on the other contracts, we're talking about $35 million. Yeah, I think... Uh, the city may potentially be on the hook for. Well, uh, I think that's what uh, he's talking about, is right now it's a few hundred thousand dollars in rejected invoices. Right. But the two major categories in my mind, one is fair collection, because there's some elements with the bus and the rail. We have to have some meetings to clarify. I mean, there's some equipment on the fair collection that's clearly bus, there's other equipment clearly rail, but then there's common elements. And from an engineering perspective, it makes perfect sense to lay it out that way. Right, but right. so we have to really explain, you know, you don't want two back offices, for example. I don't so, mean to confuse yeah. this. I hope to clarify it, but 
you keep on talking about the fair collection being a $15 million contract. The contract is actually much larger than that. It's like more than double that amount. And the other amount's already a city obligation. Yeah. And when this was all divided up a long time ago, it was with the understanding that the city is responsible for the bus portion of the fair collection operation. But it was hard to kind of divide up some of the other costs. So there was some methodology to all that. Has that aspect of the fair collection MOU or whatever we have in, in the files been presented to DAGS? No, the short answer is no. Um, the MOU between Hart and DTS still and dates and back. And still the date. There's a bigger contract and the city's already paying for their portion. Still dates back to 2016. In that MOU, the allocation of the fair collection contract is 50-50. 50 percent -50. Um, DTS responsible for and 50 percent hard is I, I, responsible for. I think that's for. where the rub is, is that the, the allocation is in question and we have to spend some time in meetings to go through that with DAGS. But DAGS yeah. has been presented with all that, right? They've seen, Correct. They've seen it, but there's a dispute right now about whether that's correct or not. We're going to have to go through it. Uh, I envision a technical discussion as well to explain the architecture and why those decisions were made. Well, I, I think since the city is involved in, in this one way or another, that they should be involved in those discussions. Um, the DTS have been, uh, and um, our fair collection manager has have been involved in the discussions and um, and I think the discussion also has to do with um, is the 2016 um, MOU that was signed before the charter amendment mm -hmm. was passed by the voters um, should still be valid and whether we should have a um, have an amended MOU to reflect the current condition of the public the res current conditions of the responsibilities between HART and DTS. Now, um, you know, all that being said, I think DAG's um, issue has to do with is 50-50 the correct allocation? Well, at the end of the day, um, you know, HART will pay for its value of the contract, which is valued at about $15 million, excluding contingency. So, um, you know, from a perception standpoint, I could understand where they're coming from. Because right now, all the work is being done on the bus, the testing is being done on the bus, right? So from, uh, from a perception standpoint, you know, I could see where they're coming from. But the reality of it is, when we're testing the back office equipment, um, because it's an account-based system, um, whatever testing that's being done also applies to rail too. We're not gonna just test a portion for the bus and a test portion for, for rail because that doesn't make sense, right? You know, you're testing the entire back office system. So, you know, those are the things that we would like an opportunity and we'll re reach out to them to, um, to explain to them up to this point you know, all the work that's related to the fare collection system really has to do with setting up the system for both bus and rail and testing the equipment, testing transactions, testing the back office um, software, software testing, and all that applies to both bus and rail. Questions? Um, I realize we're kind of running behind time and we have um, quorum issues. But uh, I'd like a few questions. I'll try and be as simple as possible here. Robert, um, last year when we did the FY19 budget, the professional services communications plan, public information at 775, which you've put the same number um, amount in the FY20 budget. And I asked for a plan mm -hmm. and I asked for metrics. Yes. And my recollection is, unless I've missed a meeting other than the November 1st meeting, we have not received that yet, and there has been no presentation. I know we've been busy. I know we've had lots of other things to distract us. But I would hope the board would support me in this issue in directing staff to do this, because I'm sure you haven't spent the 775 because part of it was intended to deal with the city center the encroachment Correct. into the city center. 
And so there's probably savings in that area, not that you can carry it forward, but um, I'd, I'd, I'd be, um, but certainly we can do planning for the city center. And um, if you're going to ask for the same amount of money, uh, and I'm not saying it's not justified, I'm just saying we need a plan. It is not enough, I repeat, not enough for us to go to fairs and festivals and have, you know, meet the, <coughs> meet the train days and stuff like that without, and I don't care about numbers of people that attend. I want metrics that show results because we are not getting the message out not getting the message out. And I cannot stress to you how important this is, especially in light of the charter amendment's failure, because that shows that there is no public trust in our organization. And, um, and I'm very upset about that. So that's my first thing. You don't have to respond. You just have to do it, OK? Um, the second question I have, and this is, uh, with the rents, I know that in the past that you have had favorable rents from um, Ali Place, and with the rent agreement expiring in FY20, mm -hmm. I would hope that you would be successful in negotiating favorable rents again, or consider another option. Um, and uh, and one of the options, I guess, is still our building out in you know. <laughs> where Ansaldo is, <laughs> as um, because that seems to me it's still a little underutilized. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to know whether part of the rents rec or recovery for FY20 is going to be charged off to DTS because I know that they're taking up some space in the in the um, in a Lee place. So that's you don't have to respond, but that you can send me an email about that. Um, in the interest of time. Um, okay, the next question I have is very similar to what my colleague asked, and that is what amount the city will have to pick up. In this budget, are we ex I know that there's been $41 million put into, into the HART budget um, to meet the FTA's requirements. 44. I'm sorry, 44, I'm sorry. And, yeah. But the... For FY20, which part of this budget is the city expected to pick up? Is it the non-capital portion, that's seven million? Or is it, because that seems to me that you've put all the personnel costs mm -hmm. into capital, virtually all, the, and this is all operating expenses. No, no, we did not put all the um, personnel costs in capital. What we did was we evaluated um, you so know, what percentage? Um, what 70, 30. 70, 30. Yeah, 70, 70 capital. capital and 30 and 2. That's correct. OK. And so that's, we can assume, is part of the 7.1 million that's, that's non-capitalized yes, account? Yes, that's correct. So is that the amount that the city is expected to pick up in this budget? Well, not in this budget. Um, probably in fiscal year 2021, the, the city will have to pick up some expenditures. Um, and the reason for that is? The reason for that is we are using pre-Act 1 GET okay. collections. Still. Still. Yeah, to, yes, correct. OK, but we're not using, um, I'm sorry, we're not using um, finance money for that. I mean, we're not financing these expenses in the interim period. You, you mean the operating? We, we can't. Yeah. We're, yeah, we, we cannot finance operating expenses. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Uh, Board Member Shen, okay. I just want to make sure you're clear on this point. The $44 million is going, it's commercial paper, but that commercial paper is going to be repaid by bonds. I understand. And bonds can only be used for capital. Capital. Okay. All right. Okay, but I guess personnel costs are still in capital to the extent they're capital. Yeah, so... Yeah, um, got it. I, got I, it. I know we're running out of time a little bit. Let me have you turn to page 12. Um, under other, the other category of capital expenditures, you see the um, category HART 200, HART 201. 200 is 8.181 million, and HART 201 is 9.382 million. Page, page 12. I 
had to have it printed in big paper so I could see, so I don't have page numbers, sorry. Okay, I got it. I okay, so if you add those two numbers up, it would tie into the 17 million that, um, that is got shown it. in the operating budget. So we are capitalizing the 17 million, and that would be either funded with, you know, that would be paid with debt and or GETTAT. Okay, so have we, because um, the non-capital portion of the budget is 7 million, have we discussed this with the city, with BFS, to mm -hmm. see if that's acceptable or not? No, not yet. After the board ap approved this budget, okay. Um, it will be submitted to the city and county by, de by December 1st. Ah, oh, it's December 1. Okay. Yeah. All right, my last one is because it is a December 1 deadline for the submission of our budget. There is another portion of the um, charter that requires us to submit a line item appropriation request um, in its annual budget and um, through the office of the mayor. And that is a separate and apart. And um, uh, so uh, I've discussed this with the mayor and um, he's not opposing this, but I th because Hart cannot do TOD, I mean, we just can't pay for anything with TOD. I would like to make a recommendation for the board's consideration that we ask the mayor to put into his budget 300,000 for purposes of TOD. And I'm not, he and uh, the mayor and I have talked about whether it's operating or capital, but there's no capital for me to link it into at this point because the, the city has not identified, neither has Hart identified a capital project that it can be affixed to. So at this point, I think I can only make the suggestion that be it be operating, 300,000 in operating, f to be placed in the mayor's budget for purposes of um, uh, providing a uh, deal maker <coughs> and organization that will put together the various entities in the community uh, for purposes of putting together some of the strategic and high priority TOD plans. And um, so I would like that to be added to our budget um, and that would be my recommendation. As I said, the mayor is not opposing this um, uh, and uh, we'll, he wants it to be part of the budget review process. He's not committed to it, although he's committed to TOD. He hasn't committed to it yet, but he's not opposing our request, so. Um, director, just to be clear, um, before we submit the budget to the mayor on December 1st, um, the direction is to add $300,000 to our current operating budget. No, um, which is on, which is the non-capitalized portion of the That's operating correct. budget. Okay. Board and it can be, yes. Uh, having been aware of your interest, though, we do have uh, a sum. I don't know exactly how much it is, but I believe it would be at least 300000 included in the DTS budget proposal. Okay. It's going into DTS as opposed to DPP or the either. land management group? <coughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I was just asking. I don't know the answer. No, it's not going into the land management de uh, department. Is that what you're talking about? Right. No. Right. Okay. Okay. I don't well, care. We can, we can I don't care where it goes. I just want it done. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll talk to you about some. Of it. Okay. But I think that that is covered already in the budget proposal. Okay, but it doesn't hurt for us to put it in there, and they can always amend it and and alter it as as before they submit it to the council in March. So I think that it's still appropriate because our budget request has to go in so early. Okay. So. Sorry, Director, I, I need to clarify again. Um, in your statement, you initially said in the mayor's budget, then it's in the Hart's budget. So we're gonna, I just wanna make sure that we're clear that we're adding $300,000 in Hart's 2020 operating budget before we submit the budget to the mayor's office on December 1st, well, correct? If I could just comment on it. See, if it's, if it's earmarked for TOD, I don't think it can be in Hart's budget because we don't have any jurisdiction over TOD. I thought you said you wanted us to request that the mayor put it in his budget. In his budget. Well, that was what I initially thought. I'll read the charter section 17106. 
the authority shall submit a line item appropriation request for its annual operating budget for the authority and its annual capital budget for the development of the fixed guideway system for the ensuing fiscal year through the office of the mayor by December 1st. The office of the mayor shall submit the authority's line item without alteration. The council shall blah, 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 approve. So that's what I'm reading. And that's the only one that we submit, right? Wasn't there another section? I thought there was another section that we had an issue last year um, about meeting a deadline and we determined that we didn't have to submit it because it wasn't going to be, do you remember that? Um, okay, but that's, so th this is the only thing we have to do, but I thought there was another one I should have looked it up, but I didn't. But. So director, one, one last thing I do want to say is the $300,000, um, I need to take a look to see whether it's FTA eligible money. Um, even so, if it's not eligible money, even if we have pre act one money, which is GET, we're, we're not going to be able to use that money to pay. So, I mean, if we put it in our budget, that would be, that would be fine. But the city would actually have to give us $300,000 because if it's deemed non-eligible, then we can't even use pre-Act 1 GET. Uh, understand. It's really intended to tap into what the city has to pay mm -hmm. for HART's operating costs, the non-capital part of it. So... Well, the non-capital part of it is FFGA eligible. I see. So this is going to be non-capital, non-FFGA. Correct. So, so we would third actually third category of our heart budget. Yeah. So we would actually need three hundred thousand yeah. dollars from the city. City. Yeah. Right. Right. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have the funding. F okay. Eligible funding. To is pay it possible for. mechanically to put a third category then in there? <laughs> Um, yeah, obviously it's possible, but the city would actually have to give us $300,000. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, so what would be our, what would be the, 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 what would be our authority to spend that money for TOD? That's my question. Well, and, and that's the point. If it's not eligible, if the city actually provides real cash to us, then we could use it. We're not going to count it as part of the project, right? But Randy, I mean, we have Hart responsibility. We can, can only do what Hart, the charter Hart, authorizes right. us right. to do, right? Correct. But we have responsibility for TOD. Do we? Yeah. So a, a limited, a limited. We don't have responsibility nor the authority to develop TOD but we certainly have a responsibility to encourage and support. Right. So that, oh, so the, that, that's yeah. what, yeah. so you think that that 300,000 right. would fall in that? Right, cap right. right. So are we recommending that change to the budget? If we can, I mean, you know, I don't want to do anything illegal and, um, and, we're early in the process that if it is illegal, it'll get struck anyway. So um, I don't see a downside to doing that. Why don't I do, um, do this before December 1st? I'll make sure um, I get some clarification to, to make sure that whether it's eligible or ineligible money. Well, money. Just footnote that in the budget. Yeah, correct, yes. Any other questions or discussion? Um, I do have one short question, I'm sorry. And this is in the capital part of the budget. Um, this is just so that I understand how the columns are, Robert. Mm -hmm. um, when we, um, when you have a column project budget based September 2018, and then you have the next column estimated contract value encumbered through FY19, remaining contract value to be encumbered, and then you have the column FY2020. So for example, on line um, under construction DB550, city center guideway. Correct. 
we put in um, $848 million in that in those in some of these boxes that's correct and so it's the intent that the FY 2020 be encumbered 848 million be encumbered in 2020 correct okay as opposed to a gradual encumbrance over the years um, we yeah we normally do that um, not with the 848 but the gradual encumbrance would be in the contingency um, amount that applies to this particular contract. So, but, so then, when you do the gradual encumbrances <clears throat> on the next page under professional services, a lot of these are gradual encumbrances um, for the years. That's also not part of the project base September 2018 budget. The September 2018 budget. I'm sorry. Okay, Could you just ask take that an example, uh, just an example so that I understand how this is um, written in the, um, for HDR engineering, we've spent 17.9 million, our project base is 101 mil uh, million, estimated contract value is, nine, um, is 63 million, Remaining is 37 million. They're mm -hmm. only 28 percent completed, and so for FY20, you're mm -hmm. asking for 32.9 to be encumbered, right? Correct. And that's supposed to add up to, over the next five years to the 37. That's contract value, right? Correct. Correct. And 37 plus 63 is supposed to equal 101. Yeah. Correct. But the total expenditure is going to be 101 plus 17.9. No, the 101, the 17.9 is included in the 101. Okay, you're, you're talking so about so the 17.9 17 17 is that's part on of the, the left hand side. Yeah. Yes. The 17.9 is part of the 101, and the 60, and the 17.9 is also part of the 63.5 okay. million, All which right. was encumbered. Okay, so you encumber it in a staggered way for yes. this type of service, mm -hmm. but not for construction. Is well, for what construction, right? what we do is we encumbered the um, independent cost estimate, what we think the bid will come in. Right. Um, we would stagger the encumbrance of contingencies that are assigned to that co to any particular contract. But isn't the 848 include contingencies? No, it does not. Really? Yeah, so if you look at page 12. So none of this includes a 200 and 200 million in contingencies? No, no. Is that the um so on the bottom of page 12, you see the allocation I of contingencies it. throughout the year. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And we do the same thing for elevators because it doesn't seems like elevators and escalators are not going to be built until all the stations are built, right? Well, the thing is, um, with the HDR example that you gave uh -huh. and the elevators, um, I put in the majority of the of the money is in 2020 because we're anticipating all that to be part of the P3 package. Okay. So we're looking at the P3 package okay. as the... Yeah. Okay. okay, I understand. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion from the members? If not, at this time, we're going to open the meeting up to public testimony. Public, public, public hearing. Anyone wanting to testify? <laughs> Good morning, Barbara Arbentrell. I'm a commissioner on the rate commission, but I'm speaking as an individual. I want to thank uh, uh, board member Ember Shin for all her questions. She always seems to know the right ones to ask. Um, I was looking at some of these um, on the capital budget, and I have a, a couple of comments on a few things. 
I'm glad to, I see the printing one, and um, I know from the very beginning when we commented, if you don't have to use color print, don't use color, you can save money on that. It can be in black and white, unless it's probably for the public. Um, I was kind of concerned on how much is jumping up in one year on professional services from 254 to 775. Um, and that's to enhance the public involvement and things like that. That's almost three times. I just was kind of curious. I hope it's not just jumping up because you got more money. Um, also, um, another one that I'm a, a little concerned about is um, you have under professional services like the Holo card launch. I thought that was under DTS now. Um, and then another one I'm a little concerned at is under the travel one. That one is three times more. And I know some of these um, trips or certain trips that have to be taken to the FTA, inspect the trains, things like that. But there's some on here also that are seminars like Railvolution. If Hart doesn't know, on Railvolution, they give scholarships where you don't have to pay to go. Anybody can put in for a scholarship. You, cannot, you, don't have, you can't do it every year. It can be every other year. And they pay for your way, and they pay um, for, to go to the seminar. You have to pay for where you stay, but if it's a scholarship, you end up staying at a board of directors house to one of the sponsors which is, I tried that and I got to do it. I went last year, Hoyt was there. Uh, a lot of uh, city council members were there. Um, and I know this year, um, uh, Andrew Robbins went, Terrence went. And I just wanna make sure when you have this, you're going every year, you don't send, unless they're absolutely key people, the same people every year, because we already know we're going from Kapolei to Ala Moana. A lot of this is urban planning, TOD. We've almost got all this already figured out, and it's supposed to open partially by 2020. I just want to make sure, try for the scholarship first. They let you know. Don't wait till the last minute. I know last year when I went, I printed out an attendee list and kept asking heart board members and no one knew if they were going. The last moment they signed up, it was on the attendee list after the cutoff where you had to pay more for participation. So if you're gonna go, do it early when it's low, not when they raise it about $200 to go. That's all I'm saying on that. And I know next year, it's gonna be in Vancouver. I'm gonna try for another scholarship as a commissioner on the rate commission, because I'm curious. They have water taxis, things like this that could be in with Hawaii. Just wanna make sure, according to this, it's you have an internal travel policy. You're gonna to have to have a passport just so that this money doesn't pay for the person's passport to go to Railvolution, that, because they can travel the rest of the years on the passport by themselves. If they're gonna, I think they should pay their own passports. That's all I'm just saying. But uh, I know Terrence went, and I, I'm sure Andrew went, and it's quite illuminating, isn't it? So uh, I intend to go try again this next year. So uh, it was quite, I, it didn't cost me a cent other than eating and I didn't go out to steak dinners because they have a lot of free things there. So it was very interesting to go. And in fact, when I came back, they sent me a check for $35 and paid my handy van from the airport to town and back. So they missed it because they weren't paying everybody's transportation, but everybody else that was a revolution, they gave a free pass. Mm -hmm. I said, but what about all these people that are disabled? 
I said, you're one of the sponsors. Denver Transportation is one of the sponsors, and you're not paying for the, ha the handy van people. They ended up giving checks back to the people because they couldn't ride the bus, the handy vans, and things like that. So Thank you. anyway, I just wanted to know about that. And um, thank you for being so, uh, you know. And I come for the rate commission so I can let them know what's going on because sometimes that's we ask DTS we don't get the answers right away and I make sure I let our chair know right away. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public testimony on the budget? Okay, hearing none. Do I close the public hearing? Yes. Uh, okay, so I guess what we're looking for is a motion to recommend approval of the budget operating and capital to the board. So do we have to include the with the amendment with the amendment for the three hundred thousand oh, pending yeah. Roberts research on it. Yep. And we do have identified the charter provision that allows us to make the separate request for an appropriation for a TOD. Okay. That's, so. so can we get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any other matters? If not, the finance committee meeting is adjourned. Oh, I needed a motion to adjourn. Never mind. I'm just trying to move on. Terry, I know you gotta go. No, I, I mean I can stay until I could. Until, until, until you have to. But John Henry can do that.
to order, Board of Directors meeting for Heart. Today is Thursday, November 15, and it's 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, first item on the agenda, is there anybody wishing to testify on any of the agenda items at this time? I got your message, Barbara. Okay, seeing none, moving to item number three. Uh, selection, oh, I'm sorry, prior to that, let me just make sure that uh, there's a correction to the posted announcement. Olelo is broadcasting in on channel 49 today and not on 55. So if you're watching 55, turn it to 49. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm assuming from the note, so. Okay. Uh, item number three, selection of the ninth voting member of the Hart Board of Directors, Hoyt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the uh, special committee to uh, consider uh, to, to conduct the process of replacing the current uh, public member, Terry Fuji, took place over, uh, this extensive search was, was um, conducted over a period of a few months, and uh, uh, we were fortunate to get a, 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 a I think, a very good um, response in terms of the number of people um, who applied. And I think, uh, although we can't talk about, you know, name anyone in, uh, in that process, I would like to take this opportunity to all the viewers who are watching the wrong channel on Alolo <laughs> now to thank the public for their response and for to all the people who did apply. Um, the committee itself uh, consisted of, uh, a, you know, more than half the board members. So it's, uh, and, I, and I say that to underscore that in, Conducting the process and the interviews and the selection, it was by consensus. The, the person that was selected was the consensus choice of the committee. Um, and he stood, um, I mean, he, his qualifications made him stand out among all of the, the good applicants that we had. And that person is someone who has been our, a, a, a non-voting member from starting last year. Uh, Toby Martin is, uh, applied and was the, the choice of the committee to, uh, to replace Terry as a public member. Um, I could go very long into why, I mean, his expertise and the matters and things that we need to be concerned about, his long service, his commitment, and really what he's demonstrated over the last year um, are, are all things that contributed to why he was uh, our selection. But I will just leave it at that, Toby, and let... Um, because uh, your, your record speaks for itself, and I'm sure everybody knows knows who you are. So um, I'm not quite sure. It, 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 so uh, the recommendation of the board is to uh, to have uh, uh, Toby Martin's uh, um, selected, or elected, chosen as the new public member. Okay. Is there anybody uh, with any questions, concerns? If not, could I get a motion to uh, on the selection of the ninth voting member? of Tobias Martin. So moved. So moved. And second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? Well, Toby, thank you. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> With that, I also want to uh, thank Terry Fuji, who is, uh, you know, put in her valuable time. I know she's a very busy <clears throat> person and all, you know, sitting on this board is not easy. Um, giving up your not. time like that. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you extending your, your time offer until we could find Toby to replace you. So Terry, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, with that, I'm off. <laughs> Wait, Wait don't you want to change? Wear him in first. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can I get that half hour? Are you waiting? Are you swearing in at this time? Will you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I solemnly swear. That I will faithfully support. That I will faithfully support the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the State of Hawaii. Of the State of Hawaii. And the Charter and laws. And the Charter and laws of the City and County of Honolulu. And the City and County of Honolulu. And conscientiously and impartially. And conscientiously and impartially. Discharge my duties. Discharge my duties. 
as a member of the Board of Directors, as a member of the Board of Directors of the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation, of the Honolulu Authority of Rapid, for Rapid Transportation, of the City and County of Honolulu, of the City and County of Honolulu. Congratulations. Thank you. Now I'm off. Now you're off. There you go. I, I, what are you doing? What are you doing I can't there? even sit here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you around, Terry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Toby. Uh, item number four, moving on, is the recovery plan. Andy? Thank you, Chair. As, as the board knows, uh, Hart submitted a recovery plan to the Federal Transit Administration back in <laughs> September of 2017. And since that time, uh, there's been a lot of work uh, undertaken. And feedback from the FTA um, is that we needed to deal with uh, three major issues uh, since that time. <coughs> One is the city funding, the city funding source, the $44 million, uh, which has been now accomplished by the city and county of Honolulu, and the $44 million is actually in the transit fund now at this point. Um, the second major issue was the, con the risk refresh, which the FTA conducted a few months ago. And as a result of that risk refresh, the recommendation from the PMOC and the FTA was that uh, we should add an additional 134 million to our to our budget, and therefore we had to identify sources of funds to cover that additional funding. And then the third major issue uh, was to determine our procurement method for the city center guideway and stations, as well as the Pearl Highlands. And as you know, that that was an effort that uh, we undertook for several months that resulted in our decision by the board to proceed with a public-private partnership for, for those elements of the project. So based on all of that, uh, it became incumbent on us to update the recovery plan and resubmit to the FDA. And we're at that point now where we have up, made that update to the recovery plan to reflect all of these issues, as well as some other updates uh, since last September. And. Um, we presented this to the, the updated financial uh, recovery plan to the city council, and they approved the submission of the updated recovery plan to the FTA. So now we present it to the Hart Board for adoption here. And based on your action, if you vote in favor of uh, submitting the, the, the updated recovery plan, we will uh, be making that uh, submission no later than Monday, which is within the 60-day <coughs> timeline that the FTA indi indicated to us in a letter uh, this past September. Thank you. And the mayor has been briefed on this as well. Yes, and I should say that the update, the effort that we undertook uh, was the result of strong uh, collaboration between the Hart staff as well as city staff. We worked very strongly together to produce all of the updates. So, yes, it incorporates uh, all of the uh, input that we received from the city uh, administration, various city departments, as well as uh, the heart staff. Okay. Board members, is there any questions, concerns? If not, can I get a motion to accept the recovery <coughs> plan for uh, Mr. Andy Robbins to submit it to the FTA? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Yes, second. All those in favor, aye. 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 And those opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Yes, Barbara. Barbara Armentrout, I'm a commissioner on the rate commission, but I'm speaking as an individual. I've gone through this uh, from the last meeting when you gave it out, and um, I know the rate commission is a little um, surprised with at our meeting that I brought this up, that it's listed in here about the rates and the fares when that's supposed to be the rate commission and uh, the public voted for the rate commission in 2016 November. 
According to a lot of this in here, it's already taken into consideration what they want the rates to be and stuff and sort of seamless from bus to rail where we were actually going to try to figure if you were going from Kapolei to Waipahu, you wouldn't have to pay as much as if you were going from Kapolei to Ala Moana. According to this, it's going to be all the same fare. So I don't know where the rate commission stands on all this, and we're still trying to figure it out. And uh, it's listed in here, projected people going and things like this. I know this had to be turned in, and that's fine, because the FDA probably wants it. But it needs to be really told to the rate commission exactly are we going to figure out a fare here, or are we going to have to go by what's in this? And if so, then why is there a rate commission? You know, it just doesn't make sense, because then you want us to up the bus prices so that it covers the rail to be seamless. So I don't know, because I know we were thinking about doing it sort of like BART, where you put the card in, wherever you get off, it takes off the amount. According to this also, it states fare collection system that will provide further insight into customer travel habits. Well, Whitney Birch already told us, we can tell you where they get on, but we won't be able to tell you where they get off. Well, if you're going to figure out where people are going on the rail, I think, you know, this holo card system should have told us. But, oh, sure, they're getting on Kapolei, they're getting off Waipahu. How do we know where they were going? And it says that the holocard's not going to say that. So to me, you're paying $23 million for the holocard, $8 million for 10 years, the city, not heart, but it's not telling us nothing when the rate commission needs those figures. So I just wanted to make a comment on that, but I'm glad you got this done in time. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm glad I read this on here because this, I think, goes back to the FFGA. This is from the get-go. So why the Charter Commission even put it on the ballot to have a rate commission for rail, bus, handy van? We're not really doing the rail. It sounds like it's almost set for us. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I, since uh, Commissioner Armitrout brings up a good point. I wanted to offer the board an explanation. So it is my understanding that uh, when it comes to the revenue derived from the fare box, the, the calculation is really representing the city council current mm -hmm. policy that uh, the fare box, regardless of the fare structure, the fare box revenue will cover at least 27% of the operating and maintenance costs. So the recovery plan and the work behind the uh, recovery plan doesn't intrude upon the work of the rate commission. Uh, that rate structure is still yet to be determined. It was assumed in the original EIS work and some of the subsequent work that the rate structure would be uniform and consistent with the rate structure that exists today, but that's not an obligation that is committed to in this recovery plan. The only thing that's committed to in this recovery plan is the city council resolution that at least 27% of the uh, uh, cost of um, operations and maintenance would be covered by the uh, revenue from the fares. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to, <clears throat> sorry, item number five, resolution number 201811 regarding the position of the Board of Directors of the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation on Honolulu City Council Bill 62 relating to change orders. Joyce? Yes, members. <clears throat> Hart has received uh, proposed amendments from Chair Martin's office with regards to Bill 62 relating to change orders, and it is in your binders. The uh, Chair has asked the Hart to review it and possibly accept, take a position of acceptance. Um, the measure would seek to be more in line with a quarterly report that we presently support, um, provide to the council. And we do this voluntarily. It was initially a request of Mayor Caldwell back in February of 2016. And so we are currently reporting um, change orders in excess of $250,000. Uh, 
So the justification at the time when Mayor made the request um, was to enable the mayor, as well as the city council, to monitor change orders or increases in cost, as well as to provide greater transparency um, on this project. So if you, there is also a memo prepared by Corp Council that was previously provi provided to you. And should you want to review that memo in light of the recent changes or proposed changes that we've received, um, executive session is listed on the agenda for you to have that conversation. And we've also got a court council deputy here, should that be something you see necessary. Okay. Thank you. Board members, any questions? Anybody wanting a further explanation in executive session? Okay, well, seeing none, can I get a motion to accept resolution 2018-11 regarding position of the board of directors on the heart um, on Honolulu City Council Bill 62? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 No. All those, no. All those opposed? No. Okay. So one no, motion passes. Uh, item number six, fiscal year 2020 operating and capital budget, six year capital plan, Robert. Good morning, Chair Kim, members of the board. In your packet is the 2020, fiscal year 2020 um, operating and capital budget. Uh, Go through the, the whole thing, or? Uh, what's your preference, Dean? You, you know, the Finance Committee has a recommendation. If you want to hear the recommendation. Yes, yeah. So, given that our chair has left <laughs> permanently from the board, <laughs> <laughs> and I am now the vice chair. <clears throat> well, I am the vice chair, so I guess I'll have to take the responsibility. So we had a meeting this morning. Uh, Robert briefed us on, on the, uh, both the operating and the capital budget for uh, 2020, and uh, there, there was uh, one amendment to the budget and that, uh, at the request of uh, Ember, and that is to add the sum of $300,000 um, for purposes of uh, HART, uh, or for the mayor, I guess, to, to, or HART, to be able to help promote TOD. Uh, we can't actually do TLD, but we, it is within our authority to, to uh, facilitate and promote it. So uh, that amendment was approved by the committee, and the committee is recommending approval to the board of this uh, uh, budget. Board members, any questions? If not, can I get a motion to accept the fiscal year 2020 operating capital budget and six year capital plan with the amendment of the 300,000 uh, added to promote the TOD? So moved. Uh, second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. Um, you know, in light of, I guess, our quorum issues that will be coming up, we have executive, a bunch of executive session items. I would like to take it out of order um, and do all the executive sessions at one time. Um, because of the size of the board, again, we're not just next door. We need to go up to the 17th floor to the bigger room. Um, so just prior to us doing that motion, I think there is uh, one item that is not listed for executive session, but it is on a voting is the eminent domain on item number nine. So I'd like to do that one first. And then just before we move into executive session, uh, item number eight on change orders, Sam, if you would do your presentation uh, following that after, okay? And then we can go into executive session. So item number nine, em eminent domain, Richard? Uh, just give us one moment, please. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> We're getting him, he's here. Okay. PowerPoint is open. I do. Oh. Yeah, 
Europe. Sorry, I caught you off guard. <laughs> you gotta be on your toes and quick around here. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, Richard O'Allen here, uh, Deputy Director of Right of Way, uh, asked to be put on the agenda today for uh, two matters uh, HECO downtown property and uh, a JY trading property off of Dillingham on Wilkowaya Street. <clears throat> If we could begin with my my slides, if it, uh, with your permission, I'll go over both uh, <coughs> both matters at the same time. Um, the first property is, as I mentioned, was Hico downtown, and Hart is seeking uh, to acquire 9,777 9, square feet of a permanent of, of a fee take in that property and a 2,656 uh, square foot easement on the back of that for uh, an easement for electrical purposes. <clears throat> As you see, it's at the, uh, the Eva Malka part of the, uh, of the property. Uh, we, this is the, we're here for the final authorization to go forward with eminent domain. Uh, we had the property appraised, the value of the property, uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. Uh, was appraised uh, July of this year, $3,102,000 was the appraised uh, value of the property. And uh, that offer was conveyed to HECO. HECO referred it to counsel uh, from the Goodsell Law Firm. They responded to us rejecting the offer. And so based upon this, we, uh, we we're here to ask for the uh, final authorization to go forward uh, to, to allow our counsel to uh, to uh, both proceed with the eminent domain and continue negotiation with HECO in this matter. Richard, if I may ask, what, what did they give a counter? They did not give a counter, not, nothing firm. There's gonna have to be negotiation. Since they have counsel involved, I'd prefer that we not, uh, as non-attorneys uh, in this world, deal with them directly and, and put our counsel in between us. So that's why we're doing this. Okay. Did they indicate, Richard, whether they had an appraisal done, their own appraisal done? I don't recall that that was in the letter. No, I, I do not. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, Richard, is the issue purely a matter of not agreeing on the value and the cost as opposed to the importance of that site to Hawaiian electric operations? It appeared to be primarily valuation. Okay. Any other questions? If not, we can take this item uh, out to vote. Um, so resolution 2018-12, uh, authorizing acquisition in fee simple interest and access easement uh, for real property identified in the tax map key 2-1-014-006 portion <coughs> is located at 170 Aloha Power Drive. All those in favor of eminent domain, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion carried. Go ahead with B. Excuse me. Just. Um, oh, I think that's that so moved. moved. Yeah. Okay. So, so moved. moved. So moved. Thank you. I'm on a roll. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, thank you. If I may, I'll, I'll move to our next uh, slide. Uh, the, this is the JY Trading Company property. Uh, it was, it's here for its initial board approval uh, for eminent domain authority. It will require us to go to the city council, seek its approval, and then uh, assuming that we get that far, that we'll be back at another time unless this matter resolves. Uh, this is a uh, property located on Moka, Moka Aya Street off of Dillingham. Uh, Hart seeking to get uh, a 1,000 square foot easement along the frontage of the property along that street. Uh, this will be for the purposes of electrical easement. There's going to be some undergrounding of some of the HECO uh, lines in the area, and there's going to be moving of a pole, and they'll need a sway easement uh, for this area. So that's why this is uh, why this request is coming forth. Mm -hmm. This was a, a later identified uh, need by the, the the project. It came to the right of way. It looks like looking at the records back in February of this year. So uh, we've uh, had the property appraised in August of this year. The value of the property was $218,000 for, uh, for the taking. Uh, there's a 
As I understand it from the appraisal, reading the appraisal, the along the front of the property is where the parking, some of the parking is. There's four parking spots on the property, and I understand that this take will uh, will eliminate one of those four spots, and that that loss is included in the valuation of the uh, of the take by in our appraisal. Uh, letter of offer was sent to the the property owner uh, September 12 of this year. Uh, 30 days has passed. We don't have a, a firm uh, acceptance or rejection of the offer. The uh, the property owner has retained counsel. Uh, the uh, the attorneys for the property owner has uh, written back to Hart, asked to see a copy of the appraisal, and we uh, are we sent the appraisal to the, uh, the property owners, uh, and that's where we stand right now. We will continue to negotiate with them. But um, based upon this, on the timing and, uh, of this matter, we're, we're here asking for this initial board approval to, to begin the process for uh, imminent domain acquisition if we need that. Any questions? If not, can I get a motion? A second. So moved. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sam, item number eight on the change order. <coughs> oh, Barbara, sorry. Good morning, Barbara Armitrout. I'm a commissioner on the Ray Commission, but I'm speaking as an individual. I just want to let the board know, I don't know if you know, yesterday at Honolulu City Council, they adopted Bill 30 CD2 relating to the acquisition of real property for city facilities and purposes, increasing the city and county of Honolulu's inventory of land that can be used for city facilities and purposes through the implementation of a review process that considers whether to acquire the remaining portion or portions of real property being partially condemned by the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transportation along the route of the Honolulu High Capacity Transit Corridor Project. Uh, the bill writer was Council Member Joey Manahan, so I suggest if you have any questions regarding that, you can call him, or it was passed yesterday. Bill 30, 2018, CD2. Thank you. Joyce, could you come up and comment on that bill? You know, right? Okay. And I just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know about it? Yes, I do. Okay. Chair, yes, that measure, as um, Barbara re uh, testified, it was introduced by Councilmember Manahan. He realizes that Hart is limited in its ability to acquire parcels or portions of parcels that we need specifically for the project, but with regards to the remainder. Um, if we don't ha have an impact on the remainder, he's interested in the city acquiring the remainder should there be an opportunity for that. So I understand they've set aside monies in the budget for of the Department of Land Management for consideration, and that's what that measure is about. So is it Hart's responsibility to report to the city then in, in something like this? Or? Oh. It's... It's, uh, with regards to our acquisitions, um, I'm not certain of how that's communicated to the city council other than our request for eminent domain notification, just like you just did with JY Trading. That gives them an idea of the process and where we're at with our negotiations. Um, certain council members who are aware of acquisitions that we are considering or be negotiating with, they contact us directly to ask us what the status is. So there's that process as well. Yeah, I think that the city and uh, Chair Ma um, Monahan's bill is a good one, uh, and we need to integrate it into the fabric of our operations. Uh, and Part of the issue that we are going to be looking at, if I can ever get a quorum to hold a TOD committee meeting, 
as is our policy about uh, how we communicate that and how we integrate this function because it is an important issue. And I know that we have acquired um, a number of properties in the past where um, had we both hard as well as the city been forward thinking, we would have made a different decision on the structure of the of the acquisition. Not so much what Hart would acquire, but certainly giving the city an opportunity to acquire a larger parcel so that they could encourage a TOD. So that is that's a good it's a good bill, and we need to integrate it into our our TOD policy. And I hope to bring that to you in December. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, Sam, no, yeah. go ahead, Mr. Chair, if I could just make a, a couple of comments and then we'll ask Sam to come on on uh, item, agenda item number eight on the change orders. The first one that Sam will make a presentation on has to do with uh, two major contracts, really three major contracts that Kiwit Construction, Kiwit Infrastructure has been involved in in the West. And as the board knows, um, the, the the West Oahu, Farrington Highway, uh, Guideway section, the Cam Highway section, as well as the maintenance facility are essentially all complete. Um, and we've been working on this uh, for several months now because there still were a number of open issues, mainly on the commercial side, with Kiwit. And uh, we wanted to see if we could reach a point where we could close out all of these contracts resolve all of the remaining outstanding claims and issues and avoid litigation uh, as well, of course. So we've been working on this uh, meeting with Kiwit for several months and I'm pleased to report that we're at the point now where we can recommend uh, um, in the form of two change orders that we'll ask the board to adopt to essentially close out these contracts and reach substantial completion and final completion in one case. And this is, as you know, we, we spent a lot of time this past year on uh, moving forward with the project, how to accomplish the city center guideway stations, Pearl Highlands. We've launched the uh, utilities contract in city center. So in my mind, this is a, a major step forward to be able to start closing out major contracts. And, and that's the point we, where we are today that we bring forward to you. So with that introduction, I'd like to bring Sam on. We'll make a presentation on uh, the uh, proposed settlement agreement. We decided to take a comprehensive look at this with Kiwit and see if we could wrap up all of the remaining issues. And we feel like we've reached that point now. And we'll make a recommendation to the board today for adoption. Um, we do have an attorney available. So if you have detailed questions of a legal nature, uh, I believe you have the opportunity to go into executive session. And we have a, an attorney available for that purpose. Okay. So with that. Great, Sam. Good morning, Chair and board members. Um, actually, the CEO said everything that I was planning <laughs> on saying. So, <laughs> um, The West Oahu uh, Farrington, and I'll start out um, so that uh, for the people who don't know the acronyms, um, uh, Farrington Highway uh, Guideway uh, was awarded in November of 2009 by the city. That's how long it, it's been around. Uh, the Kamehameha Highway Guideway um, was uh, awarded in June of 2011. So, you know, this is the cleanup, and to the CEO's credit, um, when he first came on board, he was, said that one of the missions that we had to do was to uh, clean up these contracts that had been around for some time. And obviously, um, you know, s seven to nine years is a, is a pretty long time. Had a number of change orders. We've worked on it um, extensively since then and um, made a real commitment to get this completed. And it took a number of our staff members to do it. And it's, it's been more than a, uh, many more than uh, just a few months. It's, it's been most of the year that we've worked through this. Um, as you can see, um, and I'm not gonna read everything to you here, but the total of the amendment is uh, $13.2 million. 11.4 of that is with uh, KHG. I'll use acronyms from here, here on out. Um, 1.8 um, is with the WOOF contract. That's the abbreviation that was used there. Now, I'd like you to note that um, the settlements are within the contract project contingency amounts. Okay, so even within the contracts themselves, we're not using any unallocated contingency. This is all allocated to these contracts uh, anyway. 
Um, and it, in no way does it affect our overall ca cost estimate. We're still holding to 8.165 billion, and that's good news. Okay. Um, the uh, oops, sorry. The um, change orders that the total number of change orders that we went through was well over 62, but we got it down to 62 that are included in this package. We negotiated a, a number of them earlier in this year, but this whole package that we have includes 62 change orders that we're wrapping up. An important element of this um, has to do with the um, any outstanding issues that we had hanging out there, uh, things that we cleaned up. Uh, for those of you who have worked on big construction projects at the end of the project, some people use the term global settlement, but it's a wrap-up of everything that's out there, and we want to bring it into one package and make sure that we've got the responsibilities uh, in the right place. Um, our potential exposure on this was $90 million, okay? When you, when you put all the factors in there, if you looked at whether we had lawsuits, the number of staff that have this continue, and to wrap it up is an extremely important aspect of, of where we're headed at. It also will allow us to take these risks off of our uh, program risk model for the entire project all the way through to Alamana. <clears throat> so that's a big deal. And then included in here is the final of, uh, acceptance of the MSF, um, Andy had mentioned this um, earlier, the maintenance service facility, which is now called the Rail Operations Center. Um, there were outstanding issues that uh, we needed to resolve with them. That's included in this. If you might remember, there was a discussion a while ago about shims. That's all resolved through this. And it gets us to substantial completion on uh, KHJ and Wolf. And uh, let's face it, uh, we've been running trains out there. We put track out there. Um, the, um, uh, it's, the substantial completion date is important to, to get that down there, to be able to get the responsibility total, totally over to our other contractor, our core systems contractor, um, Ensaldo. This is a cost overview. So before we even had this settlement, this is where we were. Uh, the awarded um, uh, amount of the contract, the total value to date, we had $20 million in change orders on KHG. Remember, that was the second of, of this 10 miles that we have here of guideway. That was the second contract. The first contract, WOOF, um, the total turned out to be $666 million before this change. Now bear in mind, that that was the contract that was awarded in 2009. It was the very first one. It was plagued by uh, delays. If you remember the um, <coughs> architecture, uh, archeological inventory survey, we had uh, federal um, challenges because of the um, uh, Buy America aspect. The, we had protest on the project. So all of that was wrapped up and delayed. Um, we didn't have agreements um, mapped out with uh, third party contractors the different utilities. So that's where uh, we got hit with everything. The benefit of that, if you can look at it as a benefit, we have lessons learned. And you take a look at the east side, and the project is going extremely well because we took all of these into consideration, and um, we've relocated utilities. We've got a working relationship with all the third parties. Um, and basically, I think we have some of the most successful contracts that we've ever had on this uh, with the AGS contract. So that's the good news. Okay, so here's a cost overview of the value of the two contracts, and this is what we're looking to close this out for is $13 million. Okay, so if you take the value where we are now and you put the $13 million on there, that's less than 2%. So for a huge contract to be able to, to close it out is, is pretty good if you get under uh, that kind of number. Okay, so I mentioned the closeout and I mentioned other issues that were there. Last year, our engineering group gave a presentation to the board at Coppolet, and it had to do with the tendons and the issues, the, the problems that came up out there. And um, uh, Kiewit, after a while, admitted that um, there were some issues. They went, they replaced some of the tendons. Um, they came up with um, different ideas for, for, for fixing what was out there. But we, that wasn't acceptable to us. So Hart went out. We hired some independent engineers, T.Y. Lin, you might know of them, they're an international company. We brought in a um, experienced uh, uh, engineer from the Florida DOT, and we got that relationship through um, HDOT here, um, the, uh, because you have to work through different DOTs to get somebody to, to, to be able to come out. 
Uh, and he came out, he looked at it, he did his own analysis, and he came up with recommendations. We incorporated that into our analysis, and we went back to Kiwit, and we said, hey, these are the terms we want. And we got them to agree to the following terms that you see up here. And this has to do with a 20-year warranty, where we were thinking of a, originally, the warranty was like a one-year warranty. Um, we had um, additional engineering. Um, you can see we went through by the span by spans, and you see a lot of these changes are associated with Wolf, the first contract, because that's where it occurred. As we saw that the issues came up, we were alerted, we went, went out and made sure that on KHG that we weren't repeating some of the same problems. There's a couple that went over, but for the most part, these are on Wolf. So, um, I guess the last part that I'd like to mention is that we um, took everything that's here and having the understanding that HDOT has to do the safety certification on this, that DTS inherits the structure, we wanted them to have buy-in. So we gave, have given at least two presentations, one halfway through this year and one just recently to both of those agencies and they're on board with the um, analysis and the result that we've come up with. And um, so based on that, what I'm asking the board for is to approve um, us to go ahead with the final negotiated amount of $13.2 million. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, is it possible that we can discuss this in executive session? Yes. Okay. Do um, you want to see the presentation first before we go to executive of course. sessions? Can I ask Mr. Chair a couple of questions, Sam? Sure. Um, Sam, is this for work done or work to be done? It's done. Uh -oh. Obviously, obviously, the monitoring is not completed. I mean, that's going to take place over the next so many years. Part of my lack of knowledge in these areas, does this mean that um, liens will be released and all of that? Well, we have retention because there are a number of punch list items and uh, other issues that are out there. Um, and we, we have broken down a listing that they're not going to get paid for certain uh, items until uh, we won't release the retention until these um, punch list items are completed, and that's perfectly normal on a construction project. And then you said in terms of the um, uh, not using unallocated funds, uh, and this was a part of the contracts or the allocated amounts. So it's not allocated to the contractor. It's allocated in our budget, and, and so we're not exceeding the budget for that particular line item. So is, does that mean there's any savings? Based on this thirteen million dollars, yes. Is it is it compared to the the ninety that you put out there, or is there a certain figure? I think we're going to go in executive session. I'll be able to answer that question better for you. Okay. Is there a list of items that are covered by these change orders? Is it the list that you showed there, or is it? Yes, we have a list. Separate? Yeah, we we have a listing of those. Okay. Not included I'm, in this presentation. No, but I can show them to you. That'd be great. Okay, and then we get get to executive session. We can share everything with you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sure. Anyway. Go ahead. Are you? No, well, no. we are going to go into executive session to discuss some of these questions that you may have. Um, well, I just wanted to ask for a clarification on one of the statements you made. Okay. So the Wolf uh, contract, which yeah. is original back in 2009, you mentioned. Yeah. And it's a 38% increase from that original contract if you add up all the change orders yeah. including the one that's being proposed it's yeah. about a 30 percent increase i didn't look at the percentage but i believe you something to affect that it shouldn't happen lessons learned from that original contract yeah. going forward shouldn't occur anymore so you're pretty confident that we shouldn't have any increases like that like that or certainly not okay certainly not i mean we've we've we put a lot of measures in the CCUR contract. Um, as a matter of fact, on AGS, we already did a utility relocation. And um, we're not reporting this month uh, because of the agenda so busy, but um, the, the next time that AGS is reported, you're gonna see it's very, very impressive with where we are. So. Thank you. This is a question for Sam. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Sam, the original amount, contracted amount for both of these um, guideways with Kiwit, 372 million and 482 million, roughly 850-ish million total, 
was part of the initial $5.1 billion full faith and funding that was part of the financial plan? Is that right? That's where the contract came from, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so the increases, the cost overruns of 183 plus 20, roughly 38 plus, what, 5 percent, so mm -hmm. that's 42 or 3 percent, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is part of the analysis that went into the allocation of contingency when we looked at the financial plan again and w it bumped up from 5.1 to 8.1 billion dollars. Is that right? Yes. And so when you talk about it, it's part of the budget and part of the allocated contingency, and we haven't exceeded it, it's after we did the re-crunching of the numbers. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So items, again, items number seven, uh, eight, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We're all going to go into executive session, so if I can just read the executive session um, notes. The board may enter into executive session pursuant to Hawaii Revised Statute Section 92-4 and Subsection 92-5A2 to consider the higher evaluation, dismissal, or discipline of any officer or employee or charges brought against officer or employee where consideration of matters affecting privacy will be involved. Subsection 92-5A4, to consult with its attorneys on questions and issues on a matter pertaining to the board's powers, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. And also, the board may enter executive session pursuant to Hawaii Revised Statute Section 92-4 and Subsection 92-5A4, to consult with its attorneys on questions and issues on matter pertaining on the po board's power, duties, privileges, immunities, and liabilities. Board, can I ask for a motion to get into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? We're in executive session.
the board of directors meeting is back in session from executive session um i will go out of order on copy here because i believe um we need to take care of voting items first before we lose quorum um so going to back to uh, eminent domain on item number nine i did uh, want to redo item a which is the authorizing of acquisition of fee simple interest and this is the one that was for hawaiian electrics eminent domain can I get a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay, motion is carried. Mm -hmm. On item number eight, change orders. Uh, the presentation was made early on item eight, the consolidation resolution of claims uh, amendment to Kamehameha Guideway and Farrington uh, Highway Guideway as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Wolf contract. The change order, I believe, was for $13.2 million, and I would ask for approval of this change order subject to the terms and conditions of the contract that will be approved by the board at a later date. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion, but I want to explain my vote. <clears throat> yes, sir. So I think it's important for the board and the audience to understand that at some point, uh, the interest of heart shift over to the city and this deals with the charter and the charter reads very specifically section 17 121 transfer of property for fixed guideway system operation and maintenance as and when any segment and we're talking about one of those segments of the fixed guideway system has completed its final testing and has been approved to commence revenue service all real property and interest therein that are under the jurisdiction and control of the authority, meaning heart, and that are necessary, used, or useful for the operation and maintenance of that segment shall be transferred to the jurisdiction and control of the Department of Transportation Services, whereupon the Department of Transportation Services shall assume authority and responsibility, therefore, and all revenues derived therefrom. So, this action that we're about to take is for the um, uh, change order only. There still needs to be the terms and conditions to be negotiated, and they are of great interest to the Department of Transportation Services in the city, and therefore I think it's important to let everybody know that this item will be coming back to the board for approval of those terms and conditions. So with that understanding, I'll make the motion to approve. Second. There's moved and second. All those in favor, aye. 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 All those no's. Okay, motion is carried. <clears throat> Item B, Sam, could you come up and Sam here? Andy, do you want to do that then? Which one? I'm sorry. Item B on the precast yard license 2018 to 2021 credit. I know the word credit is a good news already <laughs> for the board itself, so. Um, Maybe, maybe, um, you, you wanna, okay, and I'll, I'll try and get Sam okay, we'll try to see if we can get Sam down over here again. Um, the next item would be uh, item number 10, board leadership elections, <clears throat> continuing in order. Um, up for board leadership elections again is for the chair and vice chair positions itself. I would like to open up for uh, nominations for the board chair. Any nominations? Nominate Damon Kim. Second. Any other nominations? <laughs> I will ask again any other nominations. Move that we close nominations. Okay. <laughs> Second. Thank you. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Open position for vice chair. I move we nominate Terrence, uh, Terrence M. Lee, whoever that is. Second. <laughs> Moved and second. Are there any other nominations? Come on, Terrence, now's your chance. Any? <laughs> if not, um, all those in favor, aye. Aye. All those opposed? Well, I just want to thank you guys again. I really appreciate uh, it's good working with a great board that we have and a great makeup and um, I'm happy to you know lead us into that but I know I cannot do it definitely without all of you folks and and the help of the heart staff as well so it's very important so thank you guys and thanks Terrence because he does a lot of lifting for me when I can't be around so appreciate that um, let's see chair we're ready oh, okay Sam 
Yes, that's right. Um, can you report on your change order item B on the precast yard license? Oh, right, uh, yeah, John should come up if, if you don't mind, Chair. Sure. Well, uh, good afternoon. We all set? We're all set. <laughs> okay, this is um, rather straightforward. The uh, casting yard was originally was going to be included in STG's contract. And at the, um, what we call the best and final, it was, uh, it was stated that they expected, we expected STG to go into and negotiate with Kiewit and take over the licensing of the, of the yard, which was uh, being licensed from Avalon in simple terms. Uh, STG and <coughs> Kiewit could not come to terms. So what ended up happening was that Hart had to take over the, um, the assignment of the casting yard. So that meant that Avalon, Kiewit, and Hart entered, entered into a, uh, a, uh, a license agreement with, with Hart taking over the yard. Then that was on April 1st of 2017. And the STG contract was awarded in 2016. The NTP was on December 1st, 2016. So the next thing that had to happen is we ended up having to have another <coughs> license agreement between Avalon and Hart. And that was when we took over the, took over the agreement and we actually had STG do a sub-license agreement for 2017. That was agreed to in a separate change order that had a negative value, about $580,000. Then we had to do a sub-license agreement for 2018 through May of 2021, because STG's contract was for 42 months. So this credit change order is to provide, doc, provide back $7,313,243.50 it's a credit for the fact that Hart is paying for the yard, not STG. And this means that we now get our money back based on, on those, that, that sub-license agreement with STG. And next slide. And this was basically all the, what I went through with the sub-licenses. It was like four agreements that had to take place between us taking over the yard between us and Avalon taking over the yard for 2017 sub-license agreement to um, STG for 2017 and then the sub-license agreement for the 42 months. Next slide. And this gives you a history. The original contract value was 874,750,000. We had a number of credit change orders to date of 6,330,000. Now we have this, this is change order number eight, which is pretty good after almost two years of work. Bring us another 7,313. So we're down almost $14 million from where we started. And what's before the board is asking you to um, approve this credit change order for having Hart on the yard instead of STG, who's a sub-license. A quick question. Yep. Why was Kiewit involved in the first place, other than the fact that they did hold the current lease at the time? They had, they had the current license agreement, okay. and as they were the, had the license holder with Avalon, okay. so in order for them to move out of the way and allow us to have access to the yard, meaning STG have access to the yard, we had to go through an assignment, a reassignment uh, license agreement, which was between Kiewit, Avalon, and Hart. That caused Kiewit no longer to be associated with the yard. And then what we had to do was we had to go into a separate agreement with Avalon so Hart would maintain the yard. And then we did a sub-license agreement with STG for 2017 because Kiewit was not just moving out of the yard. They did it in, in over three steps. So, so and that one license agreement, they first gave up 5,000 five acres and then they gave up another 20 acres and they finally gave up all 35 acres and then Kiwit was out of the yard 
on December 31st, 2017. Beginning on January 1st, 2018, through that new sub-license agreement between Hart and STG, we then had them have the yard for 42 months. Question. John, is it a dollar for dollar credit or did Hart have to absorb some of the expense for this transaction? Well, we're gonna have to have some of the expense unless we find an, another party because we had to enter into a five-year agreement with Avalon. That was the least amount of time they would go. And STG only needs 42 months. So what happens after that? It's available if we have a P3 by then. They could use it, move into that yard and then take over, and then we don't have to worry about that balance. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Can I get a motion to accept the credit of, on the precast yard license for the 2018-2021? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> okay. Motion is carried. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I believe the next voting item is item number 11, Hart Annual Report to the Mayor and City Council. <clears throat> Andy. Right, so this is something that we do every year, and it was, um, I think because of the delay and having the meeting, um, we transmitted a letter to you on August the 15th with the annual report. So we need approval to be able to submit it. Okay, the annual report is in your binder, we distributed. Anybody have any questions regarding that? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve the Hart's annual report to the mayor and city council? So, so moved. And a second. 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 All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, okay, motion is carried. <clears throat> Item number 12, creation and abolishment of Hart staff positions. Good afternoon, Paul Romain here, Administrative Services Officer for Hart. The actions we're proposing should be on a handout in your board materials. It's basically eliminating seven positions and creating seven positions. So it's equal number, we're still at 135. It just was determined that, you know, the mixture should be a little different as far as some of the classifications of the positions. So I think last time, Director Machida asked is there a financial implication of this change? Yeah, it's about a $46,000 savings. So that's an estimate, because there's a range to the vacant salaries, but that's the estimate. So, sorry, guys. Yes, sir, So the base salary decreases by the reclassification? Some of them, some of the positions, yeah. Right, but overall, just on these, these positions, these seven positions, it results in a $46,000 yes. decrease. Yep, okay. it's the net difference. Could okay. be as much as 70,000 or as little as a minus 16,000, but I know what the salaries are gonna be, so it's basically $46,000 savings. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? And the director, I, the director of planning, permitting, and right of way will be, um, Responsibilities were taken up by just to reconfirm. Right, well, what we're doing, do you want to explain that, Paul? You're talking about the director of planning, permitting, and right of way. That position is being eliminated. And who picks up the responsibilities? We have a director of planning and we have a director of right of way. Okay. So it's basically eliminating one level. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? No, just a comment, uh, at the last board meeting, I was the one who asked to have this item deferred, and this is slightly different. It's just dealing with a trade, an equal trade, one position for one position, and so I'm in support of uh, passing this. Okay, is that a motion? So, uh, <laughs> I move that we uh, support the um, recommended uh, reclassification <clears throat> of the positions, abolishing the seven and creating the new seven positions listed. Thank you. S second. Approve. A motion to approve, correct. A motion to approve, correct. Second. 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 All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed, okay, motion is carried. 
Uh, the next item up for voting would be on item number 15, which is a resolution 2018 to 14 relating to the determination and adoption of policies, rules, and regulations pursuant to section 17 104.1, revised <coughs> char uh, charter of the city and county of Honolulu, 1973, as amended. Ember? Oh, that's mine. That's yours. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, this was presented to the board at the last, sorry, let me get my stuff organized, uh, at the last board meeting, and I know it's quite a lot of um, material, and we're making some fairly significant changes to the board's organizational structure. And I think uh, in light of the charter amendment's failure, uh, it becomes even more important for us to exercise our oversight responsibilities through the committee level because then we'll have a, a better chance of getting a quorum and a vote quorum as well as carrying out our oversight responsibilities. There's one other suggested change um, that is not in here, and that is to board rule um, 8.9, and that would be on page... Nine is on page 16. Thank you. 16. Uh, oh, mine have, mine's backwards. That's why. Sorry. 8.9. And that is to re delete the sentence no board member shall serve as chair of more than one permanent committee. And that's to give the chair, the board chair, some flexibility in um, appointing of chairs and vice chairs. Uh, as well as the committee structure. Um, in full disclosure, I have volunteered to be considered for a finance chair, but I'm not prepared to give up my TOD chair if the board chair is so inclined to appoint me to both things. I'm not saying he is or isn't, but I did make that um, overture. And so that overture flies in the face of this sentence. So if the board is um, amenable to considering people to have multiple chairs, then it would be prudent for us to eliminate this restriction. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to strike the sentence, the second sentence, is the, wait, is it the, second? Yeah. Yep. the one that Amber just referred to. So the no board member shall serve as a chair of more than one permanent committee. I move that we strike that sentence. Second. Okay, so the, the motion will be not only to just remove that, but to adopt the policies, rules, and uh, regulations that was sent out to us as well. Oh, I can do that. Resolution 2018. 2018-14. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, if I may just ask a question. I'm just wondering, and you being a long-serving board member, maybe you remember, but why was that restriction or limitation put in the regulations in the first place? Because it was there. <laughs> I, I, it was I in the original it rules. Was, well, yeah. the original board, you know, original. if you think about it, was much smaller as well, too, right? So um, it was just to share duties around there. But now, you know, we have, like I said, we have a, a good sized board and we have more than people more than willing to serve another board. So um, I, I think it's a welcome change uh, if you ask my, my um, opinion on it. So I'm, I'm okay with that as well. <clears throat> Um, in terms of the new rules and having the, um, is it called the executive committee? Uh, is it, that's the rapid response one? Yes. So is it contemplated, because that includes the chair and the vice chair plus the chairs of those certain right. committees. Correct. Is it contemplated or is it already the case that the chair and the vice chair don't serve as chairs of regular committees, permanent committees? The executive committee is cons consists of the chairs and vice chairs the chairs and then vice chairs only if the chair is not available in order to get quorum. So I was actually asking so the chair yeah, it, plus the vice chair plus the chairs of those certain committees for the rapid response. Yeah, it's only a five member committee and it's, it's the chair the and board vice chair. chair and the chair mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. finance, project oversight, GLAC and um, the the government, government affairs. Legal matters, right? Yeah, government affairs, right. audit, legal right. matters. Doesn't it include the board vice chair as well? It yep. does. The vice chairs come into play only if the chairs are not, available, not available so that the they can board, be. Board vice chair. 
Oh yes, board vice chair. Yes, vice exactly. So, exactly. So that's all my question is then: is it anticipated that those two would not serve as chair of regular committees, or then it would just be the vice chair? Mm -hmm. stepping it is up? not anticipated that. Well, it is anticipated that the board chair can appoint whoever he wants to be chairs of any of the committees, chairs and vice chairs. It doesn't, yeah, so it doesn't um, preclude, I guess, the chair sitting and chairing another committee, because right. I used to, well, I still chair, I guess, a project oversight okay. committee. Right. So in that case, then, would the vice chair, the vice chair would go in its place, would right. stand in a, a, right. at the end of it? Right. Yes. Okay. That's what I was going to Yeah. So I'm sorry, just to be clear, so if, so for example, just as in you, Member, as an example, if you are chairing two permanent committees, you have then, you're occupying two seats on the executive committee, uh, unless, uh, uh, I, come on, just to be clear, I mean, are you asking whether the vice chair would then step up to? I was asking in terms of the board. Board, board chair, okay, but, but you're uh, asking also. Yeah. Well, in yeah. that instance, t there's only two, two board committees that are not part of the executive committee, and that's the TOD and HR. But his question was if you're on, if or, or TOD is not, right. is not okay. right. So, but the point is on the executive committee, one person would be representing two, two of the uh, permanent committees. Then, I mean, it's, it's sure chair, the chair, the chair of the committee to. Under the old rule, each would have a separate board member chairing each of the permanent committees that would be on the executive committee, right? Correct. And if one person is, has two committees, that one person would be representing two committees then? Well, you're only representing the committee that's on the executive committee. Right. Yeah, no, but if it's... You're right, that yeah. you could have um, Yeah, if you had someone doing yeah. government and blah, 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 okay. the, and gala and finance, you'd have one person doing both, right? Correct. Is there any other, other questions? Well, I guess like my question is, well, that's a good thing, because we haven't talked about that. All right. So I think we had a motion in the second. Yes, we did. Is there any other questions? If not, we do have a motion to accept the adoption of the policies rules uh, on the resolution 2018-14 with the uh, change in striking out uh, section 8.9 or the sentence the, the sentence anyway. itself yeah not the whole section sorry the sentence as well as i just want to point out all the erratas too because there were some typos <coughs> that was included in the packet the right. last time okay okay so moved can i have a second second all those in favor, aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Motion I, I abstain. Okay. Thank you. That's the key. Oh, wait. Pass, then. then it doesn't oh, okay. pass. pass then. Okay. So what we can do is um, we can take this back to the pig committee. Well, um, we can defer to December if you want. Well, I wonder whether a better way, because I. The, the thing that concerns me is the last minute change about uh, having a you know, permanent committee, because I don't quite understand uh, I, the uh, unintended consequences of that. And we haven't discussed that at all, and so that's what I'm stuck on. So I, I'm happy with the changes that were presented before that was added. So I don't know whether we want to just pass it as and then have take it back We'll reconstitute the page to further discuss this particular change and then bring that and change meeting. the regulations at a future meeting if that's if uh, if if we agree that that's a useful change. Okay. So original motion to accept the changes has been uh, voted down. Um, can I get a motion? to adopt resolution 2018-14 without any changes as the existing form as it is now. Um, get a motion to do that and uh, we can go back, look at that change, discuss again, and then bring it up at the next board's meeting. So moved. Point of order? I'm oh, sorry. Yes, yes, go ahead. Sorry, and point of order. Um, is the process to bring it back to the board? Because I thought I heard 
Mr. Zia say bring it back to the pig because the pig's work is over, I'm told, and we can't be reconstituted again unless you reconstituted a new pig. That's what I thought from... So well, that's what I said, but I, I don't know. That's oh, proper okay. procedure. It's that's really a matter of just having a chance as a whatever the proper group is to just kind of flesh okay. out what that means. The, the board may adopt these internal management policies in whatever form it deems fit, and I believe the rules also provide for subsequent amendments to it should the board uh, move in and make a proper motion. We actually, by, by adopting, the, okay, so we go through and if we do adopt this as its present form, um, it can go back to, uh, this would be assigned to not HR the, the committee, legal audit committee then, because oh. now we have a new form of committees and they could take it up uh, in a subsequent meeting and then present the, the proper subject matter committee could entertain well, the, uh, the, the requested amendments. Correct. The proper Correct. subject matter committee would be the executive committee because be the they're responsible for board governance. Okay. But there is a way, so, okay. So that clarification, I would move to adopt as, as, as you stated, so so well, Mr. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> the original form. Do originally adopted as originally proposed without that one, the, without that one amendment or change, and and have that taken up later by the proper committee for okay. discussion recommendation. Okay. So there's a motion to accept resolution 2018-14 in its original form. Um, do I hear a second? Second. second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Are those opposed. Okay, motion is carried, um, and we can, that is executive committee you were saying, right, that we can bring this up and schedule a meeting for that. Thank you. Okay, I believe that is all the quote, voting items. Going back to first page, um, item number seven, executive director and CEO's annual performance evaluation. Hoyt? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, I put order. It requires seven members of the board to vote in favor of a rule change. Just so that you know, that's what our rules say. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's our, our new one. It was, that does never change. That was part of the old rules. The old rules, which, we oper which operated to guide us in the action we took today, separate and apart from our adoption of this resolution, our old rules said seven members have to vote in fa for a rule change, and that's not changed by anything we did today. Okay, just, just so that you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so technically, <laughs> the the real motion failed. The real motion failed. Fa correct. Failed, but you do have enough votes to make the rule change by seven votes. I know it's crazy, but that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we, we, we can address that at the next meeting because one of the deferred items yeah, is... I, I can't, I can't understand that. I understand what <laughs> okay, you're talking okay, about. Okay. 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 Uh, item number seven, Executive Director CEO is annual performance evaluation. Hoyt. Um, just reporting out of the... Uh, for, on behalf of the committee, uh, the committee uh, conducted the, its evaluation process um, and uh, derived the, um, you know, and, and, and made its considered evaluation, which it discussed and presented to the board, um, which the board accepted and uh, also delegated to the chair of that committee, me, the, uh, the responsibility for uh, preparing whatever documentation is appropriate in reporting that out to the parties that, uh, uh, to whom, uh, to the interested parties to whom we're required to report. And, um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving to <clears throat> item number 13, Hart's response to state auditor's request coming again out of executive session, <clears throat> discussion was made and a draft response has been prepared and remains to be finalized yet. So that will continue. I'm sorry, Chair. Mr. Chair, yes. with regard to the evaluation, I believe the uh, board was also going to entertain 
a motion to authorize the HR committee chair sorry. to author the. Uh, oh, I thought. I'm sorry. I thought we were. That had been part of what we had. Okay. Item, again, going back to item number seven, executive director sees uh, mm -hmm. annual performance evaluation. A motion on table is to let the Hart um, HR chair, which is Hoyt, uh, do a letter um, of the evaluation. Draft whatever draft. The, the appropriate documentation is to report it out to the appropriate parties. That is correct. Okay, so I need a motion to uh, allow uh, Mr. Zia to so that. I move that we authorize the chair of the Human Resource Committee to draft such letter. Okay. So Second. Just make clear. Just make clear. It's maybe not be a letter. I mean, I, 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 maybe that's a it's letter a with a little L. What is report. it? I said whatever the appropriate documentation whatever is. Whatever the appropriate Thank documentation you. is. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Motion is carried. Okay. Sorry. Uh, going to item number 14. <laughs> 13. What is that? 13. Well, 13 was the um, state auditor's response, right? Okay. So, uh, as, as discussed in the executive session, a draft response has been prepared and will, uh, but remains to be finalized yet. So, we'll still be uh, moving on on that. Um, item number 14, which is status on decisions mm -hmm. with Unsaldo Honolulu Joint Venture. Um, just to report out of exec executive session again, we did confer with. Just, just a second. Turn. Yes. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. I'm a little too big to get Okay, sorry. Um, item going back to item number thirteen. Uh, aside from what I, you know, reported out of there, um, like the executive um, uh, director's evaluation, we would like to assign uh, Terry Lee to report, uh, do the do the letter itself, response, um, response <clears throat> to the state auditor um, approval for him to do it. Basically, is what it is. And get a motion. So move. Second. 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 All those in favor, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Carried. Okay. Item 14, status on discussions on Saldo. Um, we had some great discussions again with our attorneys as to um, communications with Saldo regarding its change order. Um, we are still going to be moving on with that discussion uh, at later dates as well. On item number 16, claim by contractor former employee concerning heart management practices regarding consultants and contractors. Uh, what we like to report is the board has looked into it and has reviewed and decided to return it, uh, turn it into the legal counsel for further review and comment. Item number 17, on the city council resolution, um, I would like to defer that um, for the next meeting. And that brings us up to item number 18, project management oversight contractors uh, September report. So the PMOC is in your binder. Is there any other questions or anything the board wants to bring up? Seeing them, item number 19, executive director's report. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when you get to me, you know the <laughs> light is at the end of the tunnel. So first of all, I'd like to thank the board for hanging in there today on a very long meeting, but we managed to get our business done. So, so I appreciate that very much. And I'd again like to welcome Director Martin to, as a voting member. He's already a member, so a re-welcome to the board. Um, just a couple of items to report. Last Friday, I uh, conducted an all-staff meeting uh, with the entire staff, as well as our consultants. It's something that uh, was done be before I got here, and I, I support it. Uh, on a, we try to do it every six months, and we've been doing that as a way to get 
the entire staff together, be able to communicate things that are going on. Not all staff, of course, attends meetings, board meetings, or is involved in every aspect of, of the project. So it's a great opportunity to update them on everything that's going on, uh, create a little bit of a team spirit as well. So for example, we had the Dragon Boat race that we won. Uh, the Hart staff won the Dragon Boat, the uh, first prize wow. among uh, various uh, various uh, right. entities around the city. So we were very proud of that. We were able to celebrate that a little bit. And we have a, another thing going on with staff that we're calling the Hearts of Heart, which is a recognition program for all of the things that staff does outside of their day-to-day -day activities on the project. So for example, we have a, one staff member that gets very involved in the blood drive. And uh, I think we are one of the, the, the top organizations in the city in terms of uh, blood donations. And we have many examples like that. And as I hear about them, uh, you know, I, I, we wanted to find a way to uh, recognize these folks for everything they do. Another example is when we had Hurricane Lane come through here. The Hart staff adopted the, uh, one of the shelters at Waipahu High School which is a good one for us to adopt because they're our neighbor to the Rail Operations Center. And we had three, four, five staff just give up. You know, they left their families and they spent, some of them spent 24 hours at this shelter taking care of the people that were there. So, so we're gonna try to recognize these folks as, you know, over time uh, with the hearts of heart as we're calling it. Um, so that, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, Board Member Martin again who uh, attended the uh, all staff meeting. I realized uh, sort of late that uh, we've never invited board members before to these all staff meetings and uh, there was no good reason why we were not inviting. So I tried to get the word out a little bit late and we'll do a much better job on it in terms of timeliness the next time so that more of you have the opportunity to attend. I think the max is seven from what I heard, but uh, at least we'll try to get seven um, of you to attend the next one, which will probably be in the April, May timeframe. Um, I was a guest recently on the Mike Buck radio show. Um, uh, this is the second time I've done that. Um, and it's really just uh, my chance to, to help inform the public and discuss the project. And I think it went quite well. Um, um, we took some questions from listeners and and you'd be surprised, but some, some people just have some very basic questions like where's the, where's the system going? Is it serving the airport? And things like that. So as much as we think everybody understands uh, everything there is to know about the project, the, the truth is that we, we do have to do a lot of community outreach. Um, on that note, uh, we're going to have another train community day out at our Rail Operations Center. And that will be this Sunday, November 18th from 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. And Ansaldo will help us with that. Uh, the public will have an opportunity to see the Rail Operations Center. Um, there will be shuttle buses running from Leeward Community College. And they'll be able to um, actually get on the trains that are located within the facility. So it's a great opportunity. We've done a few of these before. And uh, I anticipate us continuing to do these as we lead up to revenue service. I'd just like to make a comment on this public information outreach. Uh, there was some discussion earlier on that, and certainly, uh, you know, I'll take the responsibility on behalf of the Hart staff that we need to do a much better job in informing the board and the public on what our plan is and what the metrics are. So we will make sure we prepare that. Uh, I think most likely in time for the January board meeting, we'll have that all prepared. But I do want to uh, assure you that. We do have a robust public information program. Um, I've been out to some of the events myself, uh, you know, whether they're on a weekday or a Saturday or a Sunday. We have Hart staff and some consultants involved giving up their weekends, doing these community events. Um, and uh, we'll put the metrics together to demonstrate uh, the outreach that we're doing. And what we're finding is with the everyday person, uh, we, we do encounter a lot of support for this project. And, uh, you know, whether it's people that are in favor of the rail project from the get-go or people that really just at this point want to see it finished and, and put into operation. But uh, we do note uh, from sort of everyday people that there's great interest in the project. They are looking forward as a general rule to riding the system. 
And as you know, we're working very hard on, on making our interim service date. Um, so I would like to commend our staff that uh, does put in a lot of work in terms of uh, public outreach. And we have recognized that as we move into city center, that we need to step up the effort from what we're already doing because just being in a condensed part of the, congested part of the city, you know, there's that many more businesses and uh, community groups, churches, schools that we will be affecting. And we've already started to do a lot of that outreach in city center. I, I've been at Kalihi uh, Kai Elementary School, I think twice now doing uh, outreach and uh, heart staff has done a lot more than I've been able to attend myself uh, in terms of community meetings. Um, we've met with uh, business groups as well. Um, so there's a lot going on, a lot more that we will be doing and uh, we'll definitely do a better job of uh, presenting that to you and providing the metrics as, as I know you're looking, looking for that. So with that, thank you. Thank you. Any questions? If not, um, just before adjourn, I just wanna wish everybody happy Thanksgiving um, and I have a safe one at that. I'd like to call for adjournment at almost three o'clock. Moved. So moved. Second, all those in favor, aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you guys for staying. Enthusiastically done. <laughs>geographic alliance and national geographic share with the children of hawaii a powerful and engaging educational tool the state of hawaii giant traveling map this 18 by 20 foot map is available for use in classrooms throughout the state free of charge the giant traveling map allows students to practice mapping skills and provides supplies to create fun, hands-on, tactile lessons that fulfill our state history and geography standards.